ice remind you a 30 below. Your ice remind me a cool. Jewelry, because that's everybody's really main concern. They like, where your jewelry at? First of all, I still have jewelry. The jewelry that I wanted to keep, I kept. And everything I didn't want, I sold. I never took off my chain, looked at the back, and said, where's the engravings? What kind of gold is this? I didn't do that. Is that my fault? Yeah. Now, YouTube family, this is the reason why people have to raise their awareness. You have to become more aware. We live in a time where you can advance very quickly in the financial department simply because of the advancements in technology and all other opportunities that the internet has provided. It is essential that you become more financially literate. You gotta educate yourself on how to keep the money flowing. Now, one of the books that I always recommend my friend group to read is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. One of the books that actually changed my financial trajectory. With that being said, CJ so cool, man. I don't know how many of y'all know who he is, but he's a famous YouTuber. YouTuber living out there in Las Vegas, Nevada. Just a couple years ago, we saw him with Bandman Kevo. They going to the Dior store. They going to the Gucci store, buying all the Gucci, all the Louis, all the Versace. You know what I'm saying? Lamborghinis, jewelry. That's the main thing, the main key component of this. The jewelry that these people were buying was and is still ridiculous. But if you educate yourself in the Department of Precious Metals, you would know not to go get no 10 karat gold anything if you're endeavoring to use this as an asset to trade in later at a later date. That's what these dudes lack. They lack the knowledge and they lack the common sense. Because even if they had the knowledge, they wouldn't use their common sense. Now, CJ Soku been balling hard, balling out of control on YouTube for a very long time. So you would think that he would know the difference between a liability and an asset, right? Right? You would think that somebody who ran across such an enormous fortune to where they can literally wake up and capitalize and monetize their life, you would think that these people have financial literacy. And at the very core of it, the simplest, you would think that they would have a very clear definition of assets and liabilities. For example, Vlad TV, shout out to DJ Vlad. DJ Vlad interviewed Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, and he told him that his YouTube channel was his biggest asset. So in turn, I started treating my YouTube channel like my biggest asset. Now, not only was CJ so cool unaware that his chains, his jewelry that he was buying depreciated in value with drilling holes, he was also unaware that he was receiving only 10 karat gold. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, man. It's true. And not only that, he is liquidating 70% of his YouTube royalties for whatever reason. So with no further ado, YouTube fans, let's go ahead and jump off into this video. We might dissect it a bit, but we're gonna go ahead and let him explain to y'all what I've been kind of trying to introduce. So let's just jump into the content, man. Jewelry, because that's everybody's really main concern. They like, where your jewelry at? First of all, I still have jewelry. The jewelry that I wanted to keep, I kept. And everything I didn't want, I sold. Let me tell you why. I'm scrolling on Instagram and I see the price of gold just went up. A kilo is now a million dollars. What does CJ say? Oh, this is great news to me. Ali, what up? I'm trying to sell this jewelry, bro. This stuff then went up in value. Oh, well, CJ, actually, I scammed the freak out of you and your jewelry didn't go up at all. You actually lost the majority of the value and now you only have like 10% equity in your jewelry. So, I mean, basically, you got scammed. How do you want to go about it? We arguing on the phone. This is impossible. How is this? Well, your jewelry's 10 karat gold. Okay, this is my first time hearing about this. I didn't, I know some of y'all are different. I never took off my chain, looked at the back and said, where's the engravings? What kind of gold is this? I didn't do that. Is that my fault? Yeah, let me tell you why it's my fault. I'm hanging around people who don't know anything. Now, I know he made it this far without me interrupting because I needed this to really resonate with y'all. Now, his last statement before I paused the video was that he hangs around people who don't know anything. Let this be a teaching and learning lesson for people out there. Nobody's coming to save you. It is up to you as a grown individual in order to obtain the knowledge to hold your own self accountable. Otherwise, you will be playing the blame game. But come on. I'm hanging around people who didn't advise me otherwise. So I just go in there and say, I'm back to the jewelry because that's my chain to look like this and to say that. And he said, well, give me 100K. Give me 60K. Give me 80K. Give me 70K. Give me 60K again. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And I'm just saying, okay, here. And now you're presenting to me the most cheapest jewelry possible that look good because it's shining though. With some lab grown diamonds. Bro, this is earth. I ain't hearing that. That jewelry did not make me. I made that jewelry. So, long story short, the jewelry that I had wasn't worth anything. More specifically, I paid 100000 for a chain, right? He said it was worth seven k How would you feel? 
Would you want to wear that? Would you? You probably would, but not me. I'm not walking around with this in my head saying, it looks good, it costs a lot, but it ain't worth anything. That's why every time an older person would come up to me and say, is it real? I would get offended because they understand jewelry and they like, well, if that's 24 karat, you rocking millions right now and that's crazy. And them knowing that and me not knowing that made me look like the fool that I was. So you guys can be consistently on my chain to look like. Now, before we go on, I want to show y'all this video that Bandman Kevo did on the Say Cheese platform. He was getting interviewed and he was being interviewed about CJ So Cool. Now, he was explaining how he changed CJ So Cool life when he entered his life. Notice that Bandman Kevo was giving him much praises in his next video. He posted that he made, and, and I hate the pocket watch, but that's your boy. So I just want to ask you about it. He posted that he made $800,000 in one month. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, like I feel like I feel like as if as everybody know, you know, me and bro, that month I feel like we was really, really, really overly working. And I and I just hope that he uh stay on the same track as that because that's the whole goal. What I promise when I came around is like, bro, I'm gonna make sure, you know what I'm saying, that you win and you stay on it and you be able to whether it's good or bad, you know what I'm saying? That whatever, uh, whatever you create, as long as it's bringing you money, it really don't matter. You know what I mean? And, um, I just feel like, like when I met bro, you know what I'm saying? He was, you know what I'm saying? He was, um, just, you know, trying to get everything together. You know what I'm saying? He, like he was all, you know, he always going to be rich and is rich and was rich, but I just feel like, man, you should be the, the type of person you is, you should be making three, four million dollars a month because you have the culture and you have the kids. So, you know what I'm saying? My job is always to come around with people, whoever I'm around and help, you know, get to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, sometimes it can be up and downs with people that don't want change just in your life. You know what I'm saying? And they just feel like, oh no, I want you to be like this. I want you to be that person that makes a few hundred thousand, not 800 or a million dollars, you know? So things that elevate and go up and down, but you know, when you on your way to the top, you'll lose a lot of relationships and stuff like that. And I was telling him, like, man, you're going to lose a lot of friends. You might lose this. You might lose that. But you're going to win. That's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So me and bro definitely locked in, though. He an A1 dude. Me and bro definitely locked in, though. He an A1 dude. Me and bro definitely locked in, though. He an A1 dude. Now, the crazy part about this YouTube family, man, the crazy part is... This dude literally was on a different trajectory family-wise. His initial YouTube channel was a family channel. That was until he ran across an old ballin' ass band man Kevo. Yeah, man. Hey man, Van Man Kevo entered this dude CJ So Cool Life and told him, bro, you're living too modest, man. Yeah, yeah, we see you with the Versace on and riding on all these big ass reels, but you got a ball, man. You ain't ballin'. You see what I'm saying? Now, CJ So Cool was running behind this dude because he parades himself as a guy who understands finances above any other nigga in the rap game or any other nigga that can come on the internet, right? You running behind a dude that's already actually financially stable simply because he knows how to utilize credit. And, and man, Kevo suggested that he do his own thing. He's trying to turn his channel into an adult channel. Although he was getting chili, ciabatta, cheese, doing it as a kid's channel. Bam Man Kevo's influence shifted his trajectory on YouTube. Now look, I mean, check this out, YouTube family. Come over here. Look at the first person who said anything about this dude falling off. Look, look right here at the screen. I'm showing y'all. Bam Man Kevo, the first one speaking on his downfall. Sit up there acting like he was there for him, but he the first one speaking on his downfall, bro. YouTube family, don't go broke trying to impress other people. Get some financial literacy, become aware of your whole situation, and understand what you gotta do to solve it so you don't end up like this, right? Chill. A lot of us in our lifetime, we ain't never gonna run across millions of dollars. I'm not saying that we are unable to do the thing. I'm just saying that most of us never will. But if you do, if you find yourself in a predicament where you even making hundreds of thousands, $10,000 a month, please educate yourself financially. As I stated, man, one of the books that helped change my perspective on life is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I suggest y'all go get that, man. Hey, but we ain't praying on nobody's downfall, nor are we laughing at somebody's downfall. Man, CJ, so cool, bro. Hopefully you ain't too bad on your feet and you can bounce back. But it's dudes like Bandman, Kevo, bro. Player haters like this.
these are dudes you don't want around your circle. Parading around as if though he's here to help people. And in the end, bro, if it don't go good for you, he gonna stump all on you, man. But uh, yeah, anyway, you fair, that's all I got for y'all right now. Hey, I just had to put a lesson in that one. Had to, bro. This one right here kind of upset me, man. I always supported CJ so cool, bro. And to see Bad Man Kevo flip the script, that just let you know, bro. Stop living according to other people's means, bro. Don't be trying to impress nobody, man. Become aware of your own financial situation and try to understand how you can change it, man. But anyway, you fellas, y'all already know, man. We're going to sit up there and stay there after we call together, man. It's just the law at this point and shit, man. Tighten up, man. Fuck, nigga. I'm gone. Yeah, I'm the man of the ice. I'm pippin' like I'm done one. I'ma stop at the store, sell me an onion. Go and get some backwoods in the back of Funyun. Let a nigga play me sweet and he gon' meet the honey bun. I ain't ride with it unless he got a honey round drum. Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up out, I'm bomb. Hit her with the daddy stroke, I got the little baby sprung. Gotta keep that thing on you coming from where I'm from. Gotta keep that thing on you when you coming from the bird. I be juggin' and finessing, got that boy and got that girl. She been moving up the ladder, cause the pimpin' in the world. They be shootin' around here daily, why the fuck you actin' scared? Hey, y'all got a scope, it'll knock down the bird. We got a new BBL, make a nigga stop and stare Sending packs in the mail, use the next day air I send the bitch too, I put it in the air Feeling yeah. like rich, homie, I'm the man of the year Walked in with two cups, I'm the man of the year I ain't playing with these niggas, giving stress until my bitch I be pimping on my hoes, I'm the man of the year I'm feeling like equal dollar, I'm the man of the year We gon' get the penny clear, I'm the man of the year I'm the man of the year, I'm the man of the year I'm the man of the, year. I'm the, man of the, year. I'm the man of the